our teachings on sponsor. Um, two weeks ago, we finished up our third step, which is about turning our will and our lives over to God. So tonight, we move into step four and principle four. And we start to see the importance of the role of our sponsor in our recovery. Now, for those of you who are new and do not have a sponsor, I want you to take notes. I think Marie handed out uh, some literature, just some qualities of a sponsor, differences of sponsor, accountability partners. That's a very good uh, piece of literature you can look through. Um, But I encourage you to take some notes tonight, too. Um, Take this teaching to heart, and I encourage you to put that um, into action. If you've been in recovery for a long time and have heard this lesson multiple times, I know you're very aware of the importance of a sponsor, but maybe um, try to take this in a different lens, a lens of like self-examination. Uh, ask yourself if you're doing all that you can to strengthen your sponsee's recover- recovery. Um, so kind of use this as a checklist, because um, I know that we hear these same lessons uh, each year. But step four, I want to read through this real, real quick, kind of to posture ourselves in what we're talking about. Step four is we made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Principle four is we openly examine and confess my faults to myself, to God, and to someone that I trust. So notice the last part of the principle states someone I trust. Your sponsor would be that person. So that's where we're going to focus mostly tonight. So with that, you know, we acknowledge a very uh, important part of our recovery uh, that gets overlooked, but spelled out directly here. And that's that our recovery is not meant to do on our own. It's not meant to be done alone. There are three important relationships That'll be beneficial to your sobriety, to your clean time, to your recovery. And the first cannot be overlooked, and that's your relationship with Jesus Christ. The second is your recovery group, the people in this room, your church, your life group, all of those things that feed into you spiritually. And the third is the topic of our teaching. That's our sponsor and our accountability partners. I say partners, plural, Um, because it's always better to have more than one person holding you accountable. It's not about a checklist to say, I have one, but it's about functioning as a team on your recovery. So first, I just want to explain quickly, and I know it's in the literature, but I just want to explain the the difference in the two. So sponsor, the sponsor is your guide, your coach, someone who currently has more recovery time than you, someone who's worked the steps and continues to do so, Your accountability partners are part of your team. Like I said, the main goal in this relationship is encouragement and accountability. If you are treating your recovery as a life and death situation, like a lot of us were when we first came in here, and a lot of you are right now, if it's a life and death situation, then you wouldn't want, or then you want to stack your team as strong as you possibly can to where you can't fail. And that's where this all comes into play. So there's going to be an underlying theme throughout the teaching, and it's, it's really about honesty. Um, so I'm going to talk a lot about honesty through this. Having a sponsor that you can't be honest with does no good for yourself or for them. Being a sponsor and not being able to lovingly speak truth to your sponsee does no good for either of you. Partial honesty is not honesty. And length of clean time is not a measurement of success in recovery, and these steps were not made to work half-heartedly. And what I mean by that is, yes, we do celebrate our length of clean time, but that does not mean that you're working a program specifically. That doesn't mean that you're successful in what you're doing. Um, I've had years, over a year of sobriety, without a sponsor, without working steps, and thankfully, God led me to where here, where men and women who showed me a better way were able to feed into me and show me that there's importance in these steps in the sponsor and the accountability partners. So the first question that I want to answer um, is why do we need a sponsor? Why do we need to sponsor our accountability partner? The first reason is it's biblical. So to my favorite part, we get to get in some scripture. Hebrews 10, 24 through 25 says... 
And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. I feel like that scripture just sounds like guidelines to attending a meeting. Uh, Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12 says, Two are better off than one, because together they can work more effectively. If one of them falls down, the other one can help him up. But if someone is alone, there is no one to help him. Two people can resist attack that would defeat one person alone. So if you've ever read in Kings the accounts of Elijah and Elisha, uh, I feel like that's the perfect illustration of sponsor-sponsee relationship. Um, So if you haven't, I would encourage you to go back and read some of that. Uh, Together, they performed amazing miracles that glorified God. What stands out to me the most when I was reading through it is when Elijah was coming to the end of his life, he asked Elisha, tell me what can I do for you before I am taken away from you? And Elisha replied, let me inherit a double portion of your spirit. I think that's really cool. Um, But why he said that is he saw, Elisha saw the work that God did through Elijah, and that's what he wanted for himself. So my question is, do you surround yourself with people who you'd want a double portion of their spirit? Are you a sponsor that shows your sponsees something to strive for? Are you seeking a sponsor that has what you want for yourself? So there's, there's four kind of key elements they talk about in your participant's guide um, that are elements to your success and recovery having to do with a sponsor. So I want to go through those. This is something, like I said, I'd encourage you to write down some of this. Um, The first element is maintaining your honest view of reality as you work each step. This is something that I definitely struggled with in the past. Like I told you, um, I've dishonestly worked steps Um, I've lied my way through steps. I've sat in meetings while I'm not sober and talked about the joy of being sober. Um, I did not have an honest view of reality, and I paid the price for that. There, There aren't a lot of times that this program fails when the person in recovery is honest with themselves. There are a lot of times that this program fails that when they are unable, the person is unable to step out of their denial and into God's truth. And I've seen that happen so many times. You, if you continue to come here, will see it happen. There will be people in this room who are unable to be honest in their recovery who will not be here. Um, Working the steps honestly with a sponsor is the way around all of that. The second key element to success is making your attendance to your recovery group meetings a priority in your schedule. And I know that we all get busy and there's so many excuses to not be here. It's very easy to fall into that trap. But part of the first principle that we've learned about already says that we admitted we were powerless to control our tendencies to do the wrong thing and that our lives were unmanageable. So if we're honest and believe that that's true, then step outside what you normally do and believe in the program, the whole reason that you showed up here in the first place. So in my addiction, I continuously made excuses to get out of responsibilities. That was kind of a theme in in my life. Um, But it wasn't until I decided that my way was never going to work. That's when I realized that sometimes doing what I didn't want to do was what needed to be done. So make CR a priority It's not just about showing up here on Monday nights at Northside. I needed way more than one meeting a week early on. Make all of your recovery a priority, whether it's here or outside of here. For me, if I wasn't sober, then I wasn't who God called me to be in any other aspect of my life, not just here in front of you all, my job, my marriage, my fatherhood, any of that. My sponsor reminds me to stay passionate in my recovery. 
He calls me on my excuses, and he also keeps me excited about service and being a better sponsor for other people. Now, I'm not saying you you can't take a vacation um, because you'll miss a meeting or that personal matters aren't going to come up. Um, But remember, like we talked about at our summer uh, summer event, our hurts, habits, and hang-ups don't take vacations. If we aren't working on recovery, we're working on a relapse, right? So the third element in our success is maintaining our spiritual program with Jesus Christ. So you might ask, what does my relationship with Jesus have to do with having a sponsor? Well, the, the more time that you pray, meditate, study scripture, the more you transform into the person God calls you to be, the more the third step starts to become routine and not forced, the more all of these steps become easier. And that's turning our will over to God. You no longer dread having to admit something to your sponsor that you're ashamed of uh, or that you may regret because you look forward to the advice and guidance that you get from them. And soon, you no longer have things that you regret or you're ashamed of because you have now become so immersed in living as much like Jesus as you possibly can that those old ways are no longer a part of your, of your normal life now. So one of my favorite scriptures kind of talking about that is Ephesians 4, through 24. It says, You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. This element here is where my sponsors had the largest impact on me. And it's why it's so important to be thoughtful and honest in selecting who your sponsor is. Find someone who has a spiritual program and knowledge that you want. Your sponsor doesn't just give you their personal opinion on matters. They should be seeking answers from God and guiding you in the way Jesus would guide us. So the, the last element is getting involved in service. So Luke 6.38 says, Give and you will receive a large quantity, pressed together, shaken down, and running over, will be put into your pocket. The standards you use for others will be applied to you. And then in Romans 12, 6, 13, 6 through 13, it says, and I feel, just listen to this and, Picture this being a celebrate recovery mission statement. Um, it's, it's laced with sponsorship, accountability, service, service, uh, all of that. So just listen to this. God in his kindness gave each of us different gifts. If your gift is speaking what God has revealed, make sure what you say agrees with the Christian faith. If your gift is serving, then devote yourself to serving. If it is teaching, devote yourself to teaching. If it's encouraging others, devote yourself to giving encouragement. If it's sharing, be generous. If it's leadership, lead enthusiastically. If it's helping people in need, help them cheerfully. Love sincerely, hate evil, hold on to what is good. I like that. That is Romans 12, 6 through 13. Let's see, then it, oh, I, I left a part out. Then it says, be devoted to each other like a loving family, is the end of that. Um, actually, man, I cut off of that. No, there's way more. It gets better. Hold on. <laughs> it gets better. It gets better. Be devoted to each other like a loving family. Excel in showing respect for each other. Don't be lazy in showing devotion. Use your energy to serve the Lord. Be happy in your confidence. Be patient in trouble and pray continually. Share what you have with God's people who are in need. Be hospitable. Yeah, that's good, right? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So if any of this makes you feel convicted, that's great. 
Um, <laughs> pray about it and listen. Listen to what God tells you to, and put that into action. If any of you are feeling uncomfortable about getting a sponsor, I'll say this. God is more interested in your character than your comfort. If any of you are feeling, I'm sorry, I heard a quote, um, I heard a quote from an author, Mark Batterson, that says, delayed obedience is disobedience. We don't need to know more, we need to do more with what we know. So we say it all the time, uh, it works if you work it. You're going to get out of recovery what you put into it. So don't be the person who has everyone's phone number in the room um, but never uses it. Reach out to people. This is, a, this is all about building relationship. When you do that, it all becomes easy. This isn't just about being a sponsor. It's about building up people to become sponsors. For me to be a better sponsor for this room to multiply, to be able to glorify Jesus Christ through our recovery. So that's all that I have, but I just kind of off the notes, kind of just wrapping up what I just said. As we, you know, we've continued to grow while we're, while we're in this room, you can see we start to get more and more people. That's why we've moved over here. Um, but you can, each of you can probably name two, three, four people that should be in here that aren't here or that come every once in a while and then don't come back for a while. The more that we continue to build relationships, the more that we pour into those people that aren't here consistently, the more that we show them that they have something in them that's more than what they think is in them, that's when this room continues to grow and we fill these sections and then we've got to figure out where we're going to meet after that. So if you're not ready to be someone's sponsor, look for that as a goal. You know, you can do more than just work the steps. There's more goals that you can attain. So as you work with your sponsor, think about who you could start building and loving um, in the hopes that maybe you can be that person for them. If you don't have a sponsor, like I said, be just start the step. It doesn't have to be that you just go up to them and ask them that you're, they're your sponsor tonight. Get somebody's phone number. You know, see how that works out. Let that happen naturally. Um, but it's all, it's all about relationship and loving each other, and that's how it's going to happen. So that's all that I got, guys.